was once said long ago, "'Tis impossible to be sure of anything but death and taxes." But here in electronic engineering land, that saying should be more like, "'Tis impossible to be sure of anything but power and power problems." If you're working on a low-power IoT design, whether you like it or not, you are going to face some power issues that are going to get a bit complicated. There's battery life to estimate, power consumption to track, and unwanted power drains to debug. I wish there was some kind of way we could solve these power issues before they become a problem farther along in our design process. Oh yeah, there is. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Yes, there is a solution to your low-power wireless development needs, and you need to look no farther. My guest today is Christian Sather from Nordic Semiconductor, and we are talking about the new Nordic Power Profiler Kit 2 today. Christian and I delve into the details of this new Power Profiler, including how it can measure actual current, help you configure the right design settings, and show you a visualized Power Profile for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Nordic Semiconductor. Hi, Christian. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, hi. Thanks again, and thank you very much for allowing me to come in again and and talk about some more new things from the Nordic side. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about the Power Profiler Kit 2, which is a brand new kit from Nordic Semiconductor. So Christian, before we get started, what are the key highlights we're looking at here? Yeah, that's true, as you said. It's a brand new kit from us. Maybe you know we have something already that we call the Power Profiler Kit, the original one we released a few years ago, and that's why we are at number two now. So the key things about this kit is that we now have ensured that we can measure much higher current and much higher range than in a previous generation. So we now measure everything from roughly 200 nanoamp, so support down to the deepest sleep mode, and then up to one amp. And the good thing in addition to that is that the PPK2, as we call it, also dynamically switch all this internal measurement circuitry so that you have resolution between 100 nanoamp when you're in the lower part of the scale and up to one milliamp when you're in the higher part of that scale. And this is, of course, as time goes by, we have derived new product with more complexity. And the other thing is that we have also developed our cellular product range now in the meantime, since the first kit and cellular product inherently are more complex and uses more peak current than Bluetooth low energy. So we now want a kit that can do everything so that we can have one power profile kit that can support both our short range Bluetooth low energy product, but also what we refer to as long range, our 9160 cellular product. It can also sample around 10 times faster than the previous generation at 100 kilo samples per second. So also as we get product with higher complexity, running at higher frequency, it's possible to see really in detail exactly what happens as you zoom in on the plots that the software tools are going to give. Okay, so what's inside the box? One of the PPK2s, of course. In addition to that, the measurement cable that you need to connect between this and the development kit or your own embedded hardware, and also a 10-pin logic port cable is included this time. Okay, so Christian... What is the 10-pin logic port cable for? Yeah, if you look at the picture on the presentation on this Power Profile Kit 2, you can see there is a logic port down to the right. That is actually eight digital inputs that can be used directly by the Power Profile Kit to do low-end logic analyzer support. And how you can use it is that you can take any I.O. pin on your device and you connect it to these digital inputs on the Power Profile Kit So you can actually then also see the state of these input pins as you real-time measure current consumption on your application. So you can choose to trigger output on, for example, when certain things happen. Let's say you have developed your application and you're really happy and you start measuring current and you see something going really haywire and you don't understand why. That can be really hard to debug to find exact those spots in the code where things go wrong. So you can then start to toggle some pins at some certain parts of your code. And then when you see pin toggles and you then monitor power at the same time, you can actually use that as a really great debug feature to see and narrow in on where have you done something wrong in the code that makes things behave 
very differently than what you thought. In addition to that, I'd like to mention a couple of other cool things about the new Power Profiler Toolkit. We actually have different user modes that you can select between. So you use it as an amper meter, of course, so you measure current, but we also have this source meter mode now. This means that you can actually power your device directly from the PPK toolkit and an output voltage between 0.8 and 5 volt and a peak current up to 1 amp. Meaning that, especially if you have your own embedded design, you may not have USB power or you may not have a power source nearby. You can now actually power everything through the Power Profile Kit 2 if you don't use exceeding a lot of power then compared to what this supports, up to 1 amp. It is also completely standalone. That means that you don't need any debugger or anything in addition to this to connect it to the PC and get power measurements. You only connect USB cable from the Power Profiler Toolkit and to the PC where you run the software to see all the plots and all the power cycles. Okay, so Christian, can you also talk about the software part here? Do you have anything new here with the Power Profiler Kit 2? Without software, you, you can't really see anything because everything is happening on the PC side on this kit. Before I dive into that, maybe I should mention shortly that we also have an online tool, which we call the Online Power Profiler. This tool is really a complement to the Power Profiler Kit 2 because that's a pure software tool where you basically set some settings on the device that you want to use, and then you see a estimated power consumption. But what you can then do, you can see the settings here, and you can then recognize typical waveforms that you should have if you do your application correct versus the measurements that we have in this model. The other thing that you can do with this online power profiler is that you can export your settings into a real application example. So when you run that application example on the NRF9160 development kit, for example, and measure actual current, you can compare these settings from the online power profiler to your real-world results and see if you achieve the same current and optimal current versus what you have modeled when you do this online power profiler. And then let's get into what you originally asked for, right? What software do you need to run with the Power Profiler Kit 2? The first thing you need to do is to download and install what we call the NRF Connect for Desktop. And this is the overarching cross-platform development software that we have for our Bluetooth Low Energy and Cellular IT devices in Nordic. And this is available for Windows, for macOS, and for Linux. You install that from our web page. And once you install that, you then can install various apps, as we call it, as you need to do different things. And here you have this new Power Profiler app that you can basically install. Once you've done that, then you connect your Power Profiler Kit 2 with USB, as I mentioned, and you can start measuring your application. If we then look into the actual app, here is a screenshot, and I have a little video later when I go into an example that we can show to some more detail. But here you can basically see in the top left corner that you can configure your Power Profiler 2 kit, whether you want it in source mode or ampere meter mode, for example. You start and stop, and you can also see which pins are connected for this logic analyzer. If you then look at the whole plot here, you basically see here a typical cycle running on an NRF9160 that is connected and then going back to sleep. On the bottom uh, here, you can see what is the average power consumption that is through the whole cycle that you have measured, what is the peak, what is the minimum, and what is the total energy that you have consumed. And on the bottom side, you see also the state of these logical pins that you have. So here you have a very smooth and, and nice looking interface so that you can basically see the complete profile. You can then start and stop and go back in in real time as you want. You can zoom in and you can zoom out and you can click and select certain part of this cycle to see your average peak and maximum current together with your total spent energy just in that cycle. And I will show you a little bit of that later. Okay, so Christian, before we dive into the details, can you recap quickly the key points about your NRF9160 cellular IoT device used in the example? Yeah, sure. There's an example where we use our NRF9160. This is our cellular IoT device. It's a small, highly integrated module measuring 10 by 60 millimeter in size that supports LTM1 and Narrowband IoT connectivity and also have GPS. It's a small pre-certified device so that a customer who buy this can build product and deploy it worldwide without any additional 
certifications. And we developed a product where we really focused on achieving low power consumption. It's a key for seller to grow big. We don't just see seller IoT as a way to replace 2G, but we see a lot of new use cases, especially in low power asset tracking devices, where you in the past mainly have seen other technologies such as Bluetooth low energy. This is built around our own chipset, where we have basically a dual core system where you have a modem on one side with the GPS, and you have a microcontroller on the other side where you have a Cortex M33, an embedded CPU, a megabyte of memory, and peripherals, so that it's possible to develop and run the complete application inside the SOC instead of having an external microcontroller. In addition, we integrated front-end, PMX, and passives. So all in all, you can connect battery, sensor, SIM card, and antenna and have your complete application up and running. So Christian, why do you focus so much on the PPK2 and the low power tools, especially with cellular IoT? We focus a lot there because with cellular IoT, low power is much more complex than what most wireless customers have ever seen before. So if you take Bluetooth Low Energy, um, Zigbee, Sub Gigahertz, and should we say traditional wireless technologies that are used to build very low power wireless application, they are fairly straightforward when it comes to protocol, how the device operates between them, and, and how you control power consumption. When you then go into cellular, you are entering into a world where your device not necessarily have, are in full control of how much power you use, because it's the network that dictates a lot of parameters. And when I say a lot of parameters, you have a lot of things to think about in cellular. You have RCC connected, RCC idle, different timer, CDRX, EDRX, paging cycles, PSM mode, EDRX mode, your power consumption of the SIM card. You use different bands in different regions. You have different output power, different repetition level, different modulations, depending on how the network environment is, and so forth. And what we realize more and more is that it's not possible for everyone out there to understand all these parameters. So rather than trying to make everyone an expert on cellular, we think it's better to build some tools so that you can look at this in real life and then rather understand and see what your actual power consumption is to see how you can change your behavior or tune some settings to get closer to your real life. One example that I have used here is that when you look at cellular modems or modules, you will see that most of them seemingly have very low PSM floor current. We all know that everyone, you know, including Nordic, we like to think about and promote our lowest power numbers when we have a product. But since cellular is so complex, a few parameters doesn't necessarily give you the right impression on how things are working. You need to actually go into detail or have a way to easily characterize a full device to understand how we can fit your applications. To achieve very low power numbers, you can, for example, choose to turn off part of your memory. You can lose retention on GPIOs. You can spend a lot of time to wake up doing that in cellular. If you lose retention, you need to renegotiate with the network for every wake up and every paging cycle. And in addition to that, you have SIM current, you have external microcontrollers and a lot of things you need to think about. And that makes it hard for people building cellular application to understand low power by simply looking at a few parameters and use that as a basis to understand how their application will work. So Christian, do you have an example so we can understand a bit more about this? Here is a, I would say, a quite a basic example, but show some of the complexity that comes into mind when you think about cellular. So here is a plot of a module, a modem, having 1.8 microamp PSM floor, meaning that you imagine that going to PSM sleep, you should be able to achieve 1.8 microamp in that cycle. But here you can see a plot of what is the average power consumption that this module achieves when it goes to PSM in different intervals from one hour up to 200 hours. And what you see here is that you don't get to 1.8 microamp. You get to everything from 500 microamp range down to best case around 3 microamp. The reason for this is that when you look at a single number in cellular, you need to take into account that a single number doesn't matter here because there's so many parameters to think about in cellular. Because you have to go to PSM, but for every cycle, you actually have to wake up and do a tracking area update or send some data. And all this accommodates for the average power consumption that you achieve so that 
if you imagine that you take a modem and you start thinking and building your application and assuming that you can get to 1.8 microamp PSM, you may realize that the world is different depending on how many hours you plan to sleep. And you have to go deep into your evaluation before you realize that things are different than what you planned originally by looking at a single number. So how does the NRF 9160 show up in this example? The 9160 on paper have higher PSM current. It does not have 1.8, but 2.7. But the 9160 operate differently by retaining memories in sleep. So if you compare that, you see a device that, first of all, starts with much lower average at very short sleep cycles, but you see it quickly goes down close to that 2.7 microamp that you expect to get in PSM sleep. Simply because this device is architectured in a different way, to have a little bit higher base current in PSM, but on the average level, be much, much lower because it means that when you wake up and do tracking area update, for example, you are able to wake up and go back to sleep much, much quicker and much more efficient than a module that sacrifice, for example, retention in order to get to a lower power numbers on paper. If you then take the 9160 and use one of these real low power numbers where you turn off a lot of things, to make it tougher to wake up, you see that you then get a third route to achieving low power consumption with a different point to where you should use that mode instead of a standard PSM mode, for example. So you see here that only looking at PSM, it can be challenging for any customer that are not very experienced in cellular to understand what his average power consumption will look like because it depends on not only how long he sleeps, but also how each module or modem are architected to utilize sleep modes in one way or another. Okay, so the PSM examples are very interesting, despite it only uses one of the parameters you showed. So then how can developers quickly get a realistic view on cellular power consumption for their configurations? I mentioned earlier this online power profiler that we have. We also have one for our seller product. So our first advice is that customers start with that and basically use that to configure the settings they think they have and get a visualized power profile. Doing that, they don't have to write any code. So there is no risk that you make anything stupid in your code that makes the device use a lot more power than you think. You're also not depending on real network settings that may influence your results because your network has different settings than what you imagine. So you basically get a good overview of what the power consumption should look like if your code and the network behaves the way you expect it or designs it to be. Okay, so Christian, how does this work in practice? I have a short video here that we can we can run and, and look at it and start to run this video. You first get to the... First interface, where you, on the left side, you see different chip settings. Um, on the top side, you see different results. And on the bottom right, you can basically see this uh, complete uh, power analysis uh, plot that you get out when you start running. What you then can do is that you can go in and select the typical settings that you want to use, including some network settings that we have as pre-configured. Uh, then you choose to set how long the device is active. You can choose to select if you want to use um, EDRX and how long you want the intervals to be. So basically how long you want to sleep in an EDRX cycle. You then choose if you want to send data, basically saying you want to upload data. You can choose how much data you want to upload and you can also choose at what intervals you want to upload data. In this example, 3,600 seconds, basically you upload some data every hour. Once you have done that, you get this complete power profile out where we have done some basic color coding to understand when the device is in RRC connected mode, when it is in RCC idle mode, and when it is in power saving mode. When you look at this, you also have the possibility to zoom in and out, or you can go in and basically understand at a single point what is the event there, how long did it last, how much current did it use, and so on. So you can use this to quite detail analyze a complete power cycle for any type of cellular use case that you try to set up. And then on the top of the screen, you can see what's the total energy consumption that you had, what's the minimum you've seen, and what the average that you have seen. So that's a good 
way for customers to start and actually figure it out in practice, how a realistic power consumption look for their application. The best thing about the online power profiler is that this is really simple. So you don't need to actually understand anything to go in and test parameters. You don't need to buy expensive equipment. You don't need to write any code. And finally, what we have just done very recently is that you can export your settings into NRF Connect, as I mentioned, and then rebuild an example application with the exact same settings to ensure that you have a solution that you can now go and test in real life with the Power Profiler Kit too. That's great. Now, Christian, how does this work if you want to do real life measurements and power analysis with the PPK2? That is the next step, of course. And without doing real life measurements, you will never be able to really understand how things are looking for your own application. So first, let's look at the hardware setup to quickly look at that and see how simple it can be. You basically have this four pin cable I mentioned initially that you have to connect between the Power Profiler kit and your own hardware. In this example, uh, NRF 9160 development kit. You have uh, ground that you connect to ground down on the development kit. Then you have V in and V out that you connect to the VDD NREF pins on the development kit. And basically what happens here is that once power goes in through the USB cable on the development kit, it flows into the device and then through the power profiler kit so that it's possible to measure only the power consumption in the device. But as you see here, it's important that you understand that this power profiler kit is not designed to only work with our development kits. If you build any embedded hardware, you can do it the same way if you just follow our user guide on how you develop the hardware to be able to measure power consumption on your kit. And we have a user guide to understand more details, especially if you have your own hardware where you need to ensure that you have done something in the beginning to enable power measurements, all of that is done correctly. So just go to our webpage and, and find that user guide if you need more detail than what is shown here, of course. So also for uh, the Power Profiler Kit 2, I have a short video trying to explain how that looks. So if you look at this video, uh, you see also here that uh, on the left side, you select mode. So here it's in source meter. Um, you select, you start and stop your measurements and enable power outputs so that you start plotting it on the screen. Uh, once plotting starts, you basically get this continuous profile uh, showing how much current the 9160 in this example is using. If you then look at the bottom left, you then see what's the average power consumption. This average is for the complete cycle that you have measured. So even if you pause, start, and stop, and so forth, it will measure the complete cycle. It also shows the maximum current that you measured in the cycle, how long you measured, of course, and then what's the total energy that you spent in that cycle. If you then go to the right side, you see this kind of gray area. That is when you can actually go in and look in more detail. So if we first stop this and look at the plot, you can then see RCC connected mode, RCC idle mode, and power saving mode. The PPK2, of course, doesn't have any information about these modes, such as the online power profiler. So that's where it's good to use the online power profiler together with the power profiler kit 2 to see how it should look in theory, because then you have something to compare against to also get some understanding and, and recognize a certain power profiler versus what mode the device is operating in. It is also then possible to go in and start selecting basically using your mouse, clicking from one point to the next to see just detail for that area. So here, you selected this gray area by clicking on the start and the stop on the line. And then if you look at this gray section on the bottom, you see the average current consumption in that area, 2.71 microamp. You see the maximum measured, how much time is between these two points and the total energy that you spent. So you can actually zoom in and out to understand exactly for a certain events or a certain period, what you measured. And I mentioned initially that we have 10 times higher sampling rate now, 100 kilohertz compared to the first kit we made. So here you see that you actually need to zoom in and you can get very, very detailed view on power consumption cycle and energy for a device when you use this zoom feature. And you can then go and actually mark one very specific time to see exactly, for example, for a CDRX event, what's the average power consumption. 
And here you come back to what I mentioned initially, that making more complex devices than in the past, you also have devices that have more complex power management. So they will go in and out of sleep in a cycle or in an event that you as a user think is static. So here you see that there is one event called CDRX, but the modem is actually going in and out of sleep all the time and using everything from a few microamp up to 50 milliamp in one mode. And now you have the ability to track all that and see all that and, and really see and understand the average power consumption, which is important for you if you want to calculate battery lifetime, of course. As you can see, it's, it's very simple, right? You install the app, then you click start once you connected things with USB and you have things up and running. So it's a very low barrier type of solution for any customer to start profiling their application and power consumption. And as far as I know, the only solution that exists on this level today for seller IoT applications. Okay, Christian, that was really cool. So what would you say are the key benefits that developers get now, especially versus the online power profiler? Yeah, so if you compare to online power profiler, of course, you get real measurements in your real hardware so that you can actually track down bugs. And especially for seller, you can see how SIM card and network parameters are influencing your power consumption in your application. But still, it's very, very simple to use. It's uh, one connector to your device, one connector to the PC, and you start an RF Connect for desktop, and then you run this uh, Power Profiler app inside there to see it. And then when you run this app, since the app is basically tracing both your average and also your total energy spent over the whole cycle, regardless of you pausing and stopping and starting and so on, you can actually auto-calculate the total energy consumption for your application right away without having to do anything very advanced. As I mentioned initially as well, now you have a tool where you can easily spot and you can debug if you have some current drains in your application that are unexpected or you see a power profiler that is not what you expected. Then you can look at that in the code. You can use the logical output and use some IO pins to further track down and find where things are wrong. And during your development cycle, you can actually continuously monitor also how you improve or introduce bug that influence power consumption in your application. You don't need to wait and you have finished anything or send it off to some other lab or buy some other expensive equipment once you're done with your complete development. It's a very simple and, and cost-efficient tool for anyone that want to build low-power applications. Excellent. Well, Christian, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being able to present this Power Profile Kit 2 to you today. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Nordic Semiconductor. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.